and welcome Bishop Rice, pastors, parents, family and friends, and graduates to the commencement ceremony for the graduating class of 2019. It's been a pleasure to share this time with you, and I would also like to wish all of our mothers a very happy Mother's Day. Please join us as we welcome Father Jay for our invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of wisdom, whose truth fills our world and invites us into a lifetime of learning. Bless these, our graduates. Give them joy and a sense of accomplishment in what they have achieved, but give them also a thirst for knowledge. Make them seekers who will enjoy the process of discovery. Let their education go beyond classrooms and books. Sensitize them to the lessons of experience and the wisdom of the heart. Open them to faith as well as to reason. Intuition as well as logic. Give them a curiosity that goes beyond partial answers and old insights. But through all their life, give them an inner peace so that they are neither inflated by what they know nor frustrated by what is still beyond their grasp. Abiding teacher, Lord of life, may this graduation that they will celebrate signal the beginning of their larger education. Bless them and all of us with your wisdom and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Ben, Borgmauer, ben Borgmeyer will now lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please remain standing. <laughs>
now have our leadership address from Ms. Sydney Martinez, who is the senior class president. Hello, everyone gathered here today to celebrate the graduation of the class of 2019. I would like to start by thanking my amazing family, friends, and all of the people I call family for your ongoing support that has gotten me to where I am today. I am so grateful for the constant encouragement and motivation from those surrounding me to do better and be the best version of myself. I would also like to give a special thanks to all the mothers here today, not only to my own spectacular mom, but to all those who act and treat me as their own daughters. Jerry Lynn, Christy, Becky, Renee, Jane, Christina, Miss Walker, and so many more. I would not be half the woman I am today without all of you strong, beautiful women behind me. Thank you and happy Mother's Day. With all of that said, I am honored to stand before this crowd today to present the leadership address. Throughout my many years in the Joplin area Catholic school system, I have been blessed with memories and extraordinary opportunities that will last a lifetime. We have had many questionable times with each other, for example, the we hate the junior boys phase, the school system, and life in general. Example, junior year when we all got our license and had five wrecks and numerous tickets within an embarrassingly short amount of time. <laughs> However, we did it together and stuck together, even though it was very tough at times. Growing up alongside you all has been unbelievable and I wouldn't change a thing. This specific class witnessed so many changes throughout our time at Jack's. The tornado fourth grade year, new principals, schools, and faces, all which impacted our lives and made us who we are today. Change is sometimes hard to embrace. Believe me, I know, and I'm sure the entire class is behind me when I say I am not known for my positive reactions to change. <laughs> but having 24 consistent best friends has made it much easier and made me stronger, not only as a leader, but as a person too. As Arnold Bennett once said, change is inevitable, growth is optional. And I can confidently say that this class has grown from the changes we faced. I am a leader today from the changes I have made in my life and the great lessons I have been taught from family, friends, and teachers. I think we have all become leaders in our own way, by listening better, effectively communicating, keeping a positive attitude, and never giving up. These leadership lessons will be a part of us forever. My mom once told me a story about how I was absent from preschool one day and when I returned, Miss Teresa told my mom she was so glad I was back because no one knew what to do without me bossing them around. And I guess you could say that's where leadership started for me. Throughout my years in student council, FBLA, campus ministry, and many other organizations, I have worked hard to become a leader among my peers. My family has always taught me that everything is possible with hard work and dedication. My biggest challenge as a leader was learning when to follow. But while learning to follow, more leadership skills were developed. Today is the day the rest of our lives begin. We must live our lives based on the skills, accomplishments, and the faith we have learned from our years at Macaulay Catholic. As Jean Kester once said, well, maybe a few more times than once, it's not these four walls, it's the people in the halls. Take your skills, experiences, opp and opportunities we have been given and run with them. Once a leader, always a leader. So finally, class of 2019, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to lead you. Thank you for challenging me to become a better leader. Thank you for allowing me to still be that preschool Sydney who has to boss the class around. But don't worry, I'm not done bossing you around. I'm in charge of planning our reunions. <laughs> so for one final time, goodbye Macaulay. Thank you for my best friends and everything you have taught me. And one final thank you to all of you here today for getting me to this point. blessed to have three valedictorians this year. Our first valedictorian speech will be given by Nathan Taylor. Bishop Rice clergy, administration, 
teachers, parents, and class of 2019. It is an honor to be standing before you today. It is insane to think about just how far we have come. Many of us have been together since preschool, and others have just come this year. But either way, we made it through thick and thin together and became closer because of it. We could not have come this far without the help of each other, and especially those that made us who we are today. Our teachers and staff, from elementary school, junior high, and high school, helped us set the foundation for the men and women we are today, and the men and women we strive to be in the future. Yes, they taught us about math and reading and science, but they also taught us about life and about faith. They were there when we fell down on the playground to help us up, brush off the dirt, and get us running again. And now they are here to support us along our path, and we could not be more grateful. We have our parents to thank as well. Every moment, every experience we have shared thus far would not have been made without our parents making the decision to send us to this school. From there, it was up to us. Our decisions and the way we chose to live our life made us into the people we are and the class we are. We have been waiting for this moment for as long as I can remember, watching each sports team from the bleachers just waiting to one day be out on the court, or watching from those very chairs waiting for our turn to walk across the stage. Well, the moment has finally come, and a little too fast, I might add. It feels like just yesterday, we were walking into Macaulay for our first day and sitting in the NPR, waiting for the morning announcements, back when us boys were about as immature as you could get. But we grew into, well, I guess just a little taller, but still immature boys. <laughs> but now, for one last time, we sit in Macaulay as a whole class, I have struggled with this fact for a while, just thinking back on all the memories we made. But then it occurred to me, memories cannot be made unless they are put in the past. We could not have such a great thing as a memory if we lived in the present forever. We have to be able to move forward using those memories to guide our future. I can't help but smile when I think back on the things that meant so much to us growing up. The daily soccer games, the occasional football game, because we always somehow found a way to get it banned. Being first or second captain for picking teams by sprinting onto the field as fast as you could. Or even more importantly, bringing the ball, because that meant you had all the power. All these things that meant the world to us then are now memories to cling to, but not in a sad way, but as a light to guide us on our path. The playground is where it all began for this class. Either you were getting clotheslined on the concrete during Red Rover, kicking the soccer ball as hard as you could, or sliding down the slide during a game of tag. We found ways to stick together and grow together. For whatever reason, my favorite things to do at the playground were playing soccer with the entire class and sliding down the slide. While the playground slide seems like it was ages ago, I recently realized that we never truly left that slide. For years, we have been climbing, step by step, grade by grade, still holding onto the railing, using our parents and teachers for support. Well, today, we finally reached the top of those steps, and in front of our eyes is the journey we have sought after. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be smooth sailing from here, because we all know some of those slides hurt a little on the way down. But we know that this journey is one that we must take and one that we want to take. So finally now, at the top of these steps and at the end of this journey, we begin a new one. So grab the bars, rear back, and take this leap of faith down this slide. We have earned the ride we are about to take. So class of 2019, I ask you all to go into this next step with an open heart and an open mind, remembering who helped us along our journey, and most importantly, who we took the journey with. Thank you. Our next speaker is valedictorian Johanna DeVasso. tremendous group of people. Bishop Rice, clergy, parents, teachers, administration, friends, and class of 2019. But I'm not going to lie to you. In true senior year nature, I finished this speech earlier today, 
<laughs> if you know me, that's pretty ironic, considering how hard I've worked for this moment. Ever since I was young, I dreamed about being valedictorian. For so long, this was the goal. But now, here I am, slightly underprepared, under-rehearsed, but totally fine. I guess somewhere in the midst of all of the chaos that has been the last few months, my priorities shifted. Valedictorian became less important than it once was. Instead of sitting alone at Starbucks, writing about how much I enjoyed high school, I wanted to actually enjoy what was left of it with my best friends. From districts, to prom, to finals, to our attempt to pull an all-nighter, to senior goodbyes, to revising 15-page papers, to right now, I wouldn't change any of it for the world. Actually, I'd probably be fine without those revisions. <laughs> but for once, my type A personality wasn't concerned with perfecting this speech. I didn't care about my lack of 50 cent words to make me seem smarter than I actually am. Big words were always Maddie's job. <laughs> Instead, I wanted to spend my time with the people I grew up with, the people that I love. Right now, it's so easy to get caught in the past. After all, our memories tell the story of how we became the people we are right now. We spend time reminiscing on the good, the bad, and the ugly. On the other hand, it's also really easy to get carried away planning our futures, the stresses of uncertainty and the excitement for the unknown. And while neither are bad, don't forget to live in the moment. Don't forget to live in the now. Live your now. Whether that be carpeing that diem or taking a nice nap, do it. Be fully present. Live on the edge or watch The Bachelor with some great friends. Whatever your now is, live in that moment. Because life is made up of moments, big and small, exciting and calm. We just have to appreciate everything as it comes our way. So sit and enjoy where you are. Bask in the beauty of the present because time is fleeting. These are moments we will never get back. They happen, and just like that, they're memories. We have to savor everything as it is happening right now. Seeing how much time we've crammed in together in the past few weeks is funny, considering how much we talked about getting out of here and away from everyone. But it makes sense. We're trying to be with each other as much as possible because we know it will soon come to an end. Thank you to all 24 of the hardworking students sitting in front of me. Thank you for showing me love and showing me kindness. Most importantly, thank you for being my family. I am so glad to have been able to grow and experience high school with all of you. And I honestly cannot wait to see what God has in store for the rest of our lives. Congratulations, class of 2019. As we stand at the threshold of adulthood, let us never forget where we came from. Let us look fearlessly into the future. And most of all, let us appreciate the now. Thank you. Our final valedictory address will be by Madison Zell. by thanking everyone here on behalf of all three valedictorians. Thank you to every teacher, parent, family member, friend, priest, and administrator. Our successes reflect the time and energy you all invested in us, and for that, we are eternally grateful. I also want to take just a moment to publicly thank the other valedictorians. JJ and Nathan, I truly would not be standing here now without you two pushing me. You are strong, supportive, giving friends, and I don't think the right words exist for me to express my gratitude. High School Musical captured the emotional state of seniors so well. The East High Wildcats got it right when they sang, it's our last chance to share the stage before we go our separate ways. High school wasn't meant to last forever. This is something that didn't hit me until about a week ago. We were all at prom, dancing and having a good time, when Ben grabbed my arms and said, Maddie, we are going to graduate. 
I don't know why, but until that moment, graduation and the end of high school had seemed like an abstract idea. Like something that we could talk about and plan for, but would never really come. Yet, here we stand. A group of 25 semi-scared, semi-exhausted, thoroughly ext ecstatic young adults who are on our way to college and work and the rest of our lives. Who are leaving, leaving behind this school that helped mold our lives and our friends who are our family. It feels so weird that I'm not a Macaulay student anymore. That I'll never walk into this building again and hear Mrs. Welch tell me to have a stellar day. <laughs> However, I'm here to talk about the future. I've spent a lot of time reflecting on that notion. The image of a roller coaster keeps popping in my head. No doubt what lies ahead of us is a bunch of steep, slow climbs to the top, a lot of twists and turns, and an occasional free fall when we just want to close our eyes and scream. There will be times when we just coast, enjoying the ride and the scenery. Will we be ready for it? You bet we will, because you can't get to the roller coaster until you spend your time waiting in line for your turn. That's what we're leaving behind today, the line. Our time in Macaulay is the time given to us to wait and to prepare. Have you ever noticed when you wait in line for a ride with friends, how much time you spend laughing together or talking about your fears or frustrations? You seek advice on boys or how to handle a particularly challenging teacher. You make memes and hilarious videos of your surroundings. And sometimes you just stand there complaining about how long the line is. Each day we walked through the doors of this building was another step toward the roller coaster. Each situation we encountered provided us with exactly what we needed in order to handle the twists and turns of what lies ahead. Mrs. Walker's personal finance class taught us that following Dave Ramsey is the way to go when it comes to planning our financial future. Ms. Schrader taught us that it's a bad idea to write papers that are 70% of our grade the day before they are due. Our friends cultivated our compassionate sides as we supported each other through thick and thin. Our parents embedded in us, our embedded in our personalities a sense of belonging, love, and security. Our successes in the future depend directly on what we learned and lived as we waited in line at Macaulay. My shy, timid sixth grade self could never have imagined how important and impactful this time waiting in line would be. Looking back now though, I realize that the years I spent with the class of 2019 will affect me for the rest of my life. And so I challenge each of you now, embrace the roller coaster ahead of you. Go ahead, jump into the front seat, throw your arms in the air and fearlessly embrace each exhilarating moment. Know that you have inside of you exactly what you need to handle the climb, the bumps, and the free falls. And because of the love inside of the class of 2019, you will never, ever be alone. Thank you. Okay, now y'all are a little bit surprised, but I almost cried with those. We are most fortunate to have our um, bishop the most reverend Edward Rice here to speak with us and our students for their graduation. Bishop Rice. It is an honor to be here. Oh, that's not mine. This is mine. It is an honor to be here. I don't know how many of you know this, but uh, every year I speak at all three of the graduations here at Macaulay and Joplin and Springfield Catholic in uh, Springfield and then Notre Dame in Cape Girardeau. And I always consider it to be a privilege to be here at the graduations. It's very important for me to be here uh, because I, I think it's an opportunity for me first off to thank the administration um, for your efforts in promoting Catholic education, the staff and the, the, all the faculty, uh, for all of your hard work in the education and the spiritual formation of our students. A special word of thanks to the parents, because without your support, we all know it, without your support, these kids wouldn't be here today. You're the ones that had to get them out of bed every morning. Huh? And that's not an easy task for seniors. And so a special word of thanks to the parents that are with us. I would also like to thank all the priests that are with us, and especially uh, Father Dunn, who has been the uh, chaplain for the high school over these past uh, months. And I'd like to thank also, or offer a word of congratulations to the mothers that are with us. Everywhere I go on Mother's Day, I always have a little reflection that I would like to read in honor of our mothers. 
the most important person on earth is a mother. She cannot claim the honor of having built a cathedral. She need not. She has built something more magnificent than any cathedral. A dwelling for an immortal soul, the tiny perfection of her baby's body. The angels have not been blessed with such a grace. They cannot share in God's creative miracle to bring new saints to heaven. Only a human mother can. Mothers are closer to God, the creator, than any other creature. God joins forces with mothers in performing this act of creation. What on God's good earth is more glorious than this? To be a mother. I offer this reflection to all of our mothers today and offer you my best wishes as we celebrate Mother's Day. Macaulay is an academic institution of secondary education. We all know that. But I would like to believe that what goes on within the walls of this institution is much more significant. Hopefully, Macaulay Catholic High School has been a place of encounter for our students that are graduating. The word encounter is a favorite word of our Holy Father, Pope Francis. In fact, in a letter to the church in 2013, the joy of the gospel, he challenged every church, every parish, every Catholic institution to be a place of encounter where people can meet Jesus. In fact, the opening sentence of his letter says this, the joy of the gospel fills the hearts and the lives of all who encounter Jesus. Now, when you parents registered your kids for Macaulay, was that your motivation? I want my kid to go to a high school where they can encounter Jesus. I hope so. That's what a Catholic institution is supposed to be all about. Maybe it wasn't on the forefront of your mind. But that's the purpose of every Catholic institution. And lest we forget, that's why we have mission statements that remind us of why we do what we do. So that whether you're playing sports, in chemistry or math or science or history or religion class, there's always that possibility of coming to know Jesus a little bit better. That is what makes Macaulay different from all other schools here. That in the hallways and in the classrooms, on the field, in the gym, there's always the possibility of encounter. And as we recognize the accomplishments of our graduating seniors, I pray that you take your encounters with you into the future. We all know about Mother Teresa. Saint Teresa of Calcutta now. If you go to her home in Calcutta, India that she has, that she runs, her sisters run for orphans. If you walk down the main hall, I'm told, you will find a poem that she read one time and was so touched by the poem, she had it framed and placed on the wall for everyone to see as they go back and forth at the orphanage. The poem is called Anyway. And I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm going to read parts of it. The poem says that people are often unreasonable, but forgive them anyway. If you're kind, people will take advantage of you. Be kind anyway. If you're honest, people might cheat. Be honest anyway. The good that you do today will be forgotten tomorrow. Do good anyway. You give the world the best that you have and it'll never be enough. But you give your best anyway. In a moment, you seniors will receive your diplomas and that states that you have fulfilled the academic requirements necessary to graduate from high school. And for that, I congratulate you. But I hope you take with you more than just a diploma. 
as the wonderful speakers have mentioned, you take some beautiful memories with you, don't you? And along with those memories and your diploma, take your encounters with Jesus along with you because they have helped you to be the person that you are today. As you graduate, you're going out into a world that can be kind of harsh sometimes. You're gonna meet people that are mean. And I'm gonna to say to you, be kind anyway, because that's what Jesus would want. You're gonna meet people who don't care. Jesus calls us to care anyway. There's a lot of people out there that want revenge. And Jesus calls us to forgive anyway. There can be a sense of entitlement in this world of ours and selfishness. Jesus challenges us to think of others anyway. You might be with people who take advantage of others. Jesus asks us to respect everyone anyway. There's a lot of haters out in the world. And Jesus calls us to love anyway. And you might come to meet people who don't believe. Believe in Jesus anyway. As the Bishop of the Diocese, I am privileged to participate in this graduation ceremony. As the Bishop of the Diocese, it's my responsibility and my privilege to pray for all the people of Southern Missouri. And to you graduating seniors, to you I pledge my continued prayers. We don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. And no matter what you face, you're never alone. And Jesus calls us to love anyway. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are now going to distribute our diplomas to our graduates. I would like to welcome Mrs. Walker up here to help us read the names. Bishop Rice, if you will help me distribute diplomas. Benjamin Thomas Borgmeyer.
Madison Hope Childs. Carter Christopher Churchwell. Alan William Crawford. Johanna Justine Damaso. Gavin Christopher Durgant. <laughs> Rebecca Cecile Freitas. Pearson John James. Claire Marie Lowry. Indira Rahuhio Madrigal. Sydney Marie Martinez. We on win. Mary Men Fam. Eric Michael Staub. <laughs> Zechariah Hoy Standiford. Miller Scott Stevens. <laughs> Madison Emery Zell.
Nathan David Taylor. Wajibia Natanyan.
would now like to welcome Mrs. Georgiana McGriff, the director of the John Mary Catholic Schools, to give some final rem remarks. Thank you, Mrs. Welch. She said she was going to try to wrap this up at 3.30, but I can't see a clock, so how long do I have? <laughs> Very short. Okay. Um, I'd like to close today's ceremony with just a few comments. First, thank you to the parents, immediate, extended family members, and all the friends of these graduates. This has already been said today, but your love and support over their last 18 years or so and especially your sacrifice for giving them a Catholic education is what has brought them here today with their hearts filled with love. And it's that same support and love that will take them into the future. So I commend the family members, parents, friends, everyone for your love and support and for your sacrifice for this Catholic education. Thank you. I'd like to also thank you, send it, say a thank you to our teachers, all our staff, our school board members, our pastors, our administrators, for all the sacrifices, the guidance, the leadership, the decisions that you've made on behalf of this class of 2019. Everything you do every day, you never realize, I've said this before, has an impact on students. So thank you very much for everything you've done, for organizing today, and everything else that you've done for many, many years. <coughs> Finally, thank you to each of these outstanding graduates, and thank you and congratulations to the class as a whole. You are the, I, I don't know if we've had 134 actual classes of graduates, but it's the 134th year that Macaulay has been around, that the Catholic school system has been around, so that's a long time. You guys join the ranks of those who have received a Catholic education here in Joplin, Missouri. You are now the class that goes forth into the world with your light inside you to face the world and to shine your light upon everyone you meet. I congratulate you, and I believe at this time, and I don't know, do I, I don't lead this, but do you guys stand up? Okay, I think now is time for the hat toss, but before you do that, I want to get everyone's attention. After uh, the hat toss, our bishop and our, I know our graduates, and I don't know if the entire um, body in here is going to go out, but we're going to bless our grotto. Um, we just finished it a couple of weeks ago, and the bishop is here with us today, and we're going to do that. It's um, It hasn't been actually dedicated yet, but that's the Dr. James R. Goff Memorial Grotto, and the bishop is going to bless that today. So we will do that immediately following the ceremony. All right. It's all yours. <laughs> Go be stellar. <laughs>